Hi all, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use Edison to make uh, weird spacey sounds for your Psytrance songs. Um, there are of course a lot of ways to make those kind of sounds, but today I'm going to show you how to do that with Edison in Fruity Loops. Um, first of all, you just uh, have to open your uh, mixer and add Edison to uh, any of the channels you're not using. And when you've added Edison, you have to link uh, certain other patterns to it, uh, but I'll get to that later. Well, I've added Edison to channel 8 here, and um, I've uh, made two synthesizers using Vanguard and uh, put them in pattern 1 and pattern 2 of my sequencer, and they're both linked to channel 8 and that's where Edison is. So let me uh, show you what synthesizer so one sounds like. This is synthesizer one. Uh, I used um, a trance gate uh, over it to make it choppy, kind of, but uh, that's uh, one of the options you have in uh, several synthesizers, and Vanguard is just one of them. And this is Synthesizer 2, also made with Vanguard, with a trance gate and an arpeggiator. And uh, both synthesizers uh, contain a lot of small sounds, if you listen to them carefully. And we actually are going to use these sounds to make a, a new sound with all these small sounds which should sound kind of spacey and you can use that in a side trance song. First of all, um, in Edison you have the option to record and Edison records from the track uh, that is connected to its mixer channel. So um, first of all we go to pattern 1, uh, we select to the pattern uh, playing mode in Fruity Loops and we put the on play option on in Edison, which makes uh, the pattern start recording immediately when it starts playing. So I'll press the record button on Edison, and then I'll play the pattern. As you can see, um, I've chosen the spectrum view in Edison and you can also switch it off and then you can just let me deselect everything you can just see it uh, as if you would see it in adobe audition but why i selected the spectrum mode is that it gives a kind of clear view of where the actual bits of sound start and stop like the colored areas are where the sounds are and the black areas are where it's silent so let me zoom out um as you can see, we have two markers, uh, the song jump markers. Uh, this actually means that this entire area is uh, the synth we played, and from the next song jump, it starts looping. So we don't need the area uh, in the from the second song jump, so we'll simply delete it. And we can also delete this first marker. Um, Markers are used in Edison to uh, make separate regions and um, these uh, parts, these regions, can be used to make small sounds, but I'll get to that later. So we'll delete this first marker and we can directly uh, record the second pattern as well. I'll switch to pattern 2 and Fruity Loops because um, if I press rec uh, the record button now, It'll just record the song, uh, the pattern, right at the end of this part we already recorded. And it's still on play, and uh, I'll just do it.
as you can see the same thing happens the song jumps in here and jumps in here again so we'll delete the last part and we can also delete uh, this marker now I'll uh, play the entire sample we created here so you can get an overview of what we just made in Edison well these are just both synthesizers uh, played after each other and we want to chop it up we want to use each small sound in both synthesizers uh, in our piano roll later to make a complete new uh, pattern so I'll show you how the slicing works there is this button here called medium auto slicing and uh, if I press it uh, Edison automatically puts markers in the places where it thinks that uh, the new chops begin and because we have a lot of black areas in between the separate sounds here uh, it should be quite precise so let's just give it a try well as you can see uh, we have a lot of markers right here now and these markers just separate the song just chop up the song into separate parts and uh, as we can see they're all uh, pretty preci precisely at the beginning of each new sound but um, when you zoom in further you can see that they don't actually mark the exact beginning well this might not be this might not be a problem but we just you know want to make the sounds pretty clear and we don't want to get small glitches so you zoom in and then like you see marker 4 here doesn't start at the sound here so we just move it back a little bit and marker 5 has to be moved back a little bit too and there are also markers uh, I'll zoom out first which are placed um, unnecessarily like you can see here that this is one sound and marker 11 is uh, put in the middle of it and so we can just delete mark 11 uh, let me adjust the beginning of marker 10 a little bit now what does this sound like uh, all these separate sounds you just you can select a part like this um, when you're selecting uh, Edison automatically uh, just snaps to the beginning and the end of the marker so it's easy to select a part and when you play the uh, you press the play button Edison just plays that part of the sound that is selected so I'll play uh, the part which is called marker 10 now so it sounds just fine and um, that was from the second synthesizer let's play something from the first synthesizer I'll deselect everything first by double clicking like marker six uh marker six has to be fixed a little bit and then we can just zoom out a little bit and then select it and this is what marker six sounds like so after you've done all these uh, all this editing and um uh, after you've placed all the markers in the right spots you're ready to dump it uh dump this uh chopped up sample into the fruity slicer so you can use it into your uh, in your piano roll <laughs>